Roman Polanski, another major director of that period. How many of you have seen his short film, Two Men and a Wardrobe? Please do make a note of it, Two Men and a Wardrobe by Roman Polanski. And it tells you a lot about how Polanski is interested in exploring the twin issues of time and space. It is a very abstract film, not easy to understand. I remember we were shown this movie when I was at FTII Pune and we spent the entire day discussing what it is all about. It is not a very easy to understand, but that is the entire idea about. Repulsion is starring uh, the French actress Catherine Deneuve, set in London and it is about isolation and paranoia, two recurring features in the films of Roman Polanski. Do you know his background? We are still talking about uh, new wave directors making intensely personal films. Do you know anything about Polanski's background? His wife Sharon was murdered by the Manson family, uh, but that was following uh, the phenomenal success of Rosemary's baby. Hmm? So, that is uh, uh, that that is his uh, life after he became big, but what was what happened to him earlier? He uh, was a Polish Jew and uh, some of you are already familiar with Sophie's choice, William Styron's and um, uh, during the peak of anti-Jewish, anti-Semitic feelings in uh, Europe, Polanski along with his family, I am talking about his parents, uh, he was captured and they were being deported to Auschwitz and his mother threw the little boy, he was just 8 years old, somehow she managed to open the door of the moving train and threw him out. Okay, after that he never saw his mother again, <coughs> she died while she was in Auschwitz. His father survived, but those harrowing memories always remain with him, so therefore this constant feeling of paranoia suspicion and betrayal, it is always there in his films. And then of course, following the tragic uh, event of his wife's murder by a serial killer and that was another very, uh, uh, you know, uh, um, a harrowing period for Roman Polanski. Do you know any other movie by him? Chinatown of course, we will talk about, but anything else he has done, what else happened to him? the USA because of uh, claims of uh, molesting a child. Yeah. So, because of that when his movie The Pianist was nominated at the Oscars last decade, he, he could not go to America. Because Good. Yeah. So, uh, he is still living in exile, self-imposed exile because in the US he is a wanted man. He has been charged with uh, statutory rape. Okay. Um, the woman uh, that people say that she was not exactly a child, but a minor. So, the recurring themes, suspicion, human cruelty were least expected, dark intrigues, pagan rituals. Have you watched Rosemary's baby? Okay, please do watch it. <laughs> okay, so you will understand a lot about pagan rituals in New York. So, Rosemary's Baby, based on Ira Levin's novel by the same name, it's, the entire movie is set in a New York apartment. The leading man is played by the great director John Cassavetes, we have been discussing his films. In the movie, 
he is a New York method actor and uh, he is not doing too well. So, the implication is that he has made a pact with the devil. So, the uh, you know the ironic sub subtext is that, that actors can go to any length to make it big. Rosemary believes, Rosemary played by Mia Farrow, okay, who later became Woody Allen's muse, wife and then Nemesis. Okay. So, she was many things, but after Rosemary's baby, she made another, uh, Rosemary's baby was a big success, critical as well as commercial. Uh, this was followed by um, uh, The Great Gatsby where she plays Daisy to, to Daisy to Robert Redford's Gatsby, J. Gatsby. The uh, film was written, screen was written by Coppola and after that her career was in hibernation till she was re-rediscovered by Woody Allen. <coughs> so, Rosemary believes that her husband is in league with Satan and that when she is pregnant, she believes that uh, her baby will be taken away from her by her uh, demonic neighbors and believes that her husband is also in league with her neighbors who are all followers of Satan. So, they fo do these, follow these pagan rituals and have some gems and pieces of jewelry which have strange fragrance, fragrance emanating from them. All these things, uh, it is a very dark, very intriguing film and is open ended. At the end, she believes she has given birth to Satan. Okay, so, she has, so it is called the year of the great Satan, 1966, is believed to be the year of Satan. And she believes she is the mother of Satan. At the end, she looks at the baby's face. We are never shown the baby's face, and that's where the movie ends. We don't know what the baby actually looks like. Whether she was dreaming it all along, or she she's just going paranoid because of her claustrophobic surroundings, or whether indeed she has given birth to Satan. We are never given satisfactory responses to that. His most successful movie, Chinatown, 1974, it has a number of great lines. The movie ends with the, uh, the detective Escobar telling Jack Gittes, played by Nicholson, forget Jake, it is Chinatown. So, Jack Nicholson is a, a hard boiled detective, almost in the Nobel League of Humphrey Bogarts and other detective heroes from film noir. Chinatown is a neo noir. Okay, neo noir, how do we differentiate the classic noir from neo noir? Are there any differences? If I tell you, usual suspects is a neo noir, memento is a neo noir, the, and Chinatown is the first of neo noir. Then what are the features of this genre, sub-genre. The classic novels were all of the late 30s and 40s and early 50s I guess, but uh, after that time I think it was the musicals which came into prominence and it was only from the 70s that we have film novels popping up. Renewed interest in noir, okay, but are there any defining features of neo noir? I am not just talking about the period, but are there any define? is neo noir in, in any way different from the original Noah. Not exactly, not exactly, except that in Neo Noah you have more, many more contemporary, then contemporary themes to reflect on. Okay. So, if there is memento, then what are the themes? The construct of memory. Okay. That is a very important feature of Neo Noah, how memory plays its role 
defining characters and uh, pushing a plot. The basic theme is that of land grabbing in California. You should do some research on this land grabbing in California. I think you would know, Ranjit, you are into this kind of city studies and all. So, do look up on the land grabbing and developing of the entire California valley. Okay. How did that uh, city become so prosperous all of a sudden? What games did real estate people play in uh, uh, making that particular valley so prosperous and rich that the price has just skyrocketed? Okay, so, there, there is a history there. There is a lot of you know, uh, financial intrigue happening there. So, please look it up. Uh, Chinatown star Jack Nicholson, John Huston, okay, John Huston who was also a director. What did he direct? The Maltese Falcon, remember with Humphrey Bogart, the treasure of Sierra Madre, Faye Dunaway and it, the movie was produced by Robert Evans. Robert Town officially screen, wrote the screenplay for this. This is one of those movies where he was not just um, the screen, uh, the script doctor, but also the um, official writer. For the major part of the movie, this is the way Jack Nicholson looked like. Yeah. Why? the thugs who are involved uh, in uh, land grabbing and he is the detective, he is investigating a murder and the thugs uh, catch hold of him and they say, you are a very nosy man and you know what we do to people who are so nosy, <laughs> we cut off their noses. So, they try and the hand that chops off Jack Nicholson's nose belongs to Roman Polanski himself. Okay. The director making an appearance as a thug, okay, very self -referen referential, self conscious. Uh, in Chinatown has several great moments, but the subtext is incest, and that is a very important part of the narrative. This is the this is where the suspense lies. Faye Dunaway's character who is uh, John Huston's daughter in the movie and later on we are told that um, she has been molested by her own father when she was 14 or 15 and has given birth to her father's child, a daughter. So, at the end when Jack Nicholson carry, uh, confronts her and he asks her, who is this girl? Okay, tell me the truth, I want the truth and she says, she is my sister and he slaps her. Then she says, she is my daughter and he slaps her again and then she blurts out, she is my sister and my daughter. Okay. And then she asks him if he is able to understand. What there is no like elaborate expression, uh, explanation for that, just that one moment tells us the entire thing and the depths to which this man, the so called very respectable real estate person played by John Huston, he can stoop to. Bolansky's later works, of course, he had those issues, the legal issues and he had to leave America, but then he made Frantic with Harrison Ford, it is again a homage to Hitchcock, it is a very suspenseful movie. The Ninth Gate, how many of you have watched the movie? It is like the Da Vinci Code or uh, 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 that movie with uh, Sean Connery, um, The Name of the Rose. Remember The Name of the Rose based on Umberto Eco's novel. He is a medieval priest, Sean Connery and he is in search of, uh, of a very enigmatic lost text by Aristotle. Okay, that is fictional, there is no enigmatic lost text by 
um, Aristotle. But the entire movie, the entire suspense is built on that premise. So, in the ninth gate, Johnny Depp is a rare book dealer and he is tracking down copies of a satanic text. So, again look at Polanski's interest in paganist rituals and, and satanism. He won the Oscar for the pianist, I think Adrian Brody won it too, the best actor and, uh, and through this movie he revisits the memories of Nazi occupied Poland. He made a musical Oliver Twist in two th based on Charles Dickens novel and the ghost writer, I am sure mo most of us here are familiar with P. S. Brosnan's almost along the lines of Tony Blair, right? The ghost writer, which is a tale of political intrigue. Another great director of that period, Alan J. Pakula, and he has made a number of uh, political thrillers. Clute, Parallax View, it's about political assassination. <clears throat> All the President's Men, his most popular movie, starring Robert Redford and Dustin Hoffman, and is based on which event? The Watergate scandal, Deep Throat. Hmm? Presumed Innocent is a murder mystery based on uh, a Scott Tarot's novel of the same name, Harrison Ford, and The Pelican Brief. Julia Roberts and Denzel Washington. We were talking about the uh, how the new wave Hollywood directors were more interested in sourcing music and not in developing or creating an original soundtrack for their pictures. But then one movie came along which changed the equations, and it was such a huge movie, such a great blockbuster that it went on to influence a generation. Um, of musicals of generation, which was hugely influenced by musicals all over the world. There was a period when everybody wanted to look like John Travolta in Saturday Night Fever, directed by John Bedham. Again, it is one of those coming of age rites of passage movie. It tries to rework the musicals of classic Hollywood period. Uh, who were the musical sensation, the musical stars of that period? Yeah. Good. Ginger Rogers and Fred Astaire. Gene Kelly, okay, singing in the rain. Those were the musical, the dancing heroes of the 50s, the 40s. Okay. And Travolta brought back the dancing hero, the category of dancing hero. Tony Monera, he is working class Italian American, lower uh, middle class family from Brooklyn. He has no ambition, remember. Okay, so, he leads a very mundane kind of life, works in a paint, um, in a hardware store, a paint store. But he comes alive on Saturday nights, okay, where he dresses up and goes to a very gaudy discotheque called 2001 Odyssey, homage to Kubrick of course. Uh, during the same period in uh, Hollywood, there was something called Studio 54. Look this up, this is your homework, you have to watch lots of movies and then you have to look up Studio 54. Studio 54 was kind of a very elitist discotheque, where only the very rich and influential can uh, find an entry. But then uh, in Travolta's Saturday Night Fever, because they come from a certain background, you cannot go to a place like Studio 54. So, therefore, they have to invent a place, 2001 Odyssey where people like Tony Monero could walk in. So, of course, it brought back the musicals uh, in fashion and in many ways it also reinvented 
men would dress okay and for a very long time you would find every young man dressed up the way um, john travolta's character would be dressed up in the movie you have to look it up to um, understand his fashion music by the gib brothers and then the legacy of the movie is that it gave birth to the modern dance film some of the most well known in car grease again starring john travolta olivia newton john grease is also a stage play footloose with starring kevin bacon very young kevin bacon dirty dancing patrick swayze and then there were several imitations including you can think of a movie like fast forward okay so the uh, you know you know a string of movies that followed that imitated the success of saturday night fever it's a very dark movie in uh, patches it's not like uh, american graffiti or even the diner you are you aware of the diner Barry Levinson just note it down i won't be able to do so much of new hollywood but you should know the diner which is again like american graffiti set in a small town in baltimore barry levinson directed to you guys barry levinson would be best known for rain man rain man so he is the director and the diner is another very uh, beautiful coming of age movie starring again kevin bacon and mickey rourke very young mickey rourke so uh, this is the last movie today that i would be discussing michael chimino's the deer hunter Michael Cimino could never repeat the success of the Deer Hunter. Uh, I think we have already done excerpts from the movie, the Russian roulette scene. It's a classic Vietnam picture. Came along the heels of Coming Home, Hell H B S, The Boys in Company, and Go Tell the Spartans. All Vietnam pictures made in 1978. and francis was still shooting apocalypse now his magnum opus in philippines in rain in rain water and thunder storms and that was released in 1979 the deer hunter if you haven't already watched it please do watch it one of the most influential films of that period it uh, tells you the story of a group of working class russian americans from pennsylvania such small steel town where most people work in steel industries and they uh, these uh, this group of young men they enlist for the vietnam war but before enlisting there are two rituals that have to be followed one is one of their friend steve okay by, uh, played by john savage he gets married to his sweetheart second is the men take a trip a deer hunting trip the leader of the boys is robert de niro the movie begins with an extended wedding sec- sequence again uh, you know paying homage to coppola's got the godfather where all the characters are in, uh, introduced and the plot is set and then suddenly we are taken to the war scene in the middle of the war it's not we don't see people firing away at each other we just find that this the same group of young men who we just watched getting married and participating in rituals they are taken prisoners by a group of vietnamese and uh, they are forced to play the game of russian roulette there were protests from many anti war americans that uh, this actually didn't happen the vietnamese didn't force anyone to play russian roulette and it is, but then for for chimino that was a metaphor for 
the brutality of war. He just wanted to show you how evil war could be. Movie was hugely received, phenomenal reception. It won four Academy Awards. Best Picture, Best Director for Chimino, Supporting Actor for who? Christopher Walken and Editi. Chimino became the toast of town, a new author in the making. So, thank you very much and we will continue tomorrow.